for example you have taken a a pan and you have filled it with some water and then you have then you have closed the pan with a lid you have placed a lid on the pan and now you're heating the the pan so what will happen is that you know that the water will the water molecules they will gain energy and first evaporation is taking place because they have gained energy so what happens is that when this evaporation is taking place then the gas that has formed it goes to the lid right so for example this is the pan and this is the lid so the part the the gas particles start collecting over here and when they start collecting over here they have, they they come very close together and when they come very close together some of them have little very little energy and they start forming bonds with each other again so what happened during evaporation bonds were broken so that's why a liquid turned into a gas but at the lid at the lid the particles are coming back the gas particles are coming closer together to form a liquid so that's why you see liquid droplets over here you see you start seeing liquid droplets over here so the thing is that uh, these liquid droplets then they drop back into the pan and it's a continuous process evaporation liquid droplets form then they drop back to the pan so over a certain period of time there will be an equilibrium established a dynamic equilibrium established between the liquid and the vapor so between liquid water and steam right there will be an equilibrium established so we we show this equilibrium as h2o liquid h2o gas so this is an equilibrium and you know that at a dynamic equilibrium the rate at which the forward reaction takes place is the same as the rate at which the back reaction takes place right so uh, so there will be no overall change in the amount of liquid water and steam so the pressure that is exerted by the steam at equilibrium is called the vapor pressure so this is what is the vapor pressure and um because the steam is exerting pressure over the walls of the containers so that's why it's called vapor pressure now as you increase temperature vapor pressure will increase because you can see that the, the forward reaction is endothermic and if you remember an increase in temperature favors the endothermic side of an equilibrium so uh, so the the forward reaction uh, the the equilibrium will shift to the right so more vapor will form and because more vapor is forming the vapor pressure increases right so that's why the, uh, that's why increasing the temperature increases the vapor pressure so the temperature at which the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure is equal to the boiling point so um this makes a lot of sense because if the vapor has enough pressure to overcome the atmosphere then all of the liquid can form the gas because all of it can escape upwards into the atmosphere because it can overcome the atmospheric pressure so when vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure the liquid starts boiling and that's why the boiling point is basically the temperature at which the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure so this is a new this is the definition of boiling point that you're not you, that you're going to write you will not write that boiling point is the temperature at which a liquid turns into a gas you will write that the boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a liquid is equal to the atmospheric pressure okay so um this is the vapor pressure so you can see that a liquid which has low vapor pressure will have a very high boiling point because first you will need to heat it then the vapor pressure will increase and when the vapor pressure will increase to its to the atmosphere to the atmospheric pressure value then it will start boiling so that's why it will have a high boiling point because you will have to give more energy to it but if the vapor pressure is already very high then the boiling point will be very low because you will need to provide you will need to provide very less energy to increase the vapor pressure to the atmospheric pressure and therefore uh, and therefore some liquids have low boiling points some liquids have high boiling points because the ones with low boiling points have high vapor pressure and the ones with high boiling points have low vapor, vapor pressure so this is about vapor pressure now we are done with gases so we are coming gases and liquids so we are coming to solids so we have uh, actually we have already talked about simple molecular structures ionic compounds and metallic structures in the chemical bonding playlist so i'm not going to talk about them again uh, so we are going to directly start start with alloys and their properties now an alloy is a mixture of metals okay so for example when you melt two metals like you melt 
copper and you melt iron and you mix the molten states together and when you solidify it you get a mix.